Hey guys, this is Kira from Server Pro, and welcome back to our faction series. In this episode, we're going to be optimizing Spigot to reduce the chance of lag occurring on our Minecraft server, and we're also going to be installing some plugins to prevent our server from being hacked or cheated on. Also, before we begin this episode today, I'd like to mention that we are going to be joining some of your servers. So at the end of this series, when we're finished with the last episode, we're going to be doing a bonus episode where we're going to be joining some of your servers that you've made following this tutorial. So feel free to leave the IPs to your servers down below for a chance to have your server on a video. So other than that, let's get straight into this episode. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is optimizing the server. So if you go to your server in our control panel, and then if you go to the file manager, and then look for the server.properties file, then in here we're going to be changing two settings. So the first setting that we're going to change is the view distance setting. So if you look for this here, it should say view distance equals 10. So we're going to change this to a lower figure. We're going to change it to five. I would recommend setting it to around five or seven. So the next setting that we're going to be changing is this setting here, Network Compression Threshold. So we're going to change this from 256 to 512. Then once you've changed both of those settings, click Save, and then go into the bucket.yml file. So in this file, we're going to be changing a couple of settings. The first settings we're going to change is the spawn limits. So this is basically how many mobs are allowed to spawn per player. It's not as simple as that. However, that is basically what it is at a basic level. So you can change these to whatever amount you want. The lower you set them, the less mobs you're gonna have. You don't have to change them if you don't want to, but I'm going to set them to 50 on the monsters, and I'm going to set them to 10 on animals. I'm going to set water animals to three and ambient to four. Again, you could change these as much or as little as you want. You could set monsters to 60 if you wanted there to be more monsters. Um, it's completely up to you, but I'm just going to leave it as this as I believe these settings are ideal. So the next setting that we're going to change is this junk GC setting area. So we're going to change period in ticks to 300, and then we're going to change load threshold to 300 as well. Then below this, we're going to be changing this monster spawn setting under ticks dash pair to two. You can change it to something higher. The higher it is, the better really. However, if you set it to something higher, there's going to be a lot less mobs. So I would only recommend it changing to two if you want there to be some mobs on your server. So once you've changed all of these settings, click save and then open the spigot.yml file. So in this file, there are a couple of settings that we can also change to optimize the server. But first, we're going to take a look at some fun settings to change. So you can change the messages that are displayed when your server has a whitelist enabled, when it's full, when a player is joining with an outdated client when they're joining an outdated server or when the server is restarting so you can adjust these for whatever you like so if you wanted to change whitelist to maybe the server is in maintenance mode you could do that and again just go ahead and edit all of these if you want to one I like to change is the unknown command one so if you have a command that a player types and it's not correct you could put something like this is not a valid command contact a staff member if you think there's a problem so you could type something like that again you can change these to whatever you want and it is really nice to have especially the whitelist one because a lot of servers do have maintenance sometimes where you don't want players to join servers so it just lets them know what's going on so after you've made these scroll down a little bit to the world settings area and the first setting we're going to change in regards to optimization is this mob spawn range. So I'm going to change this to three. This basically changes how far away mobs are spawned from players. So the next setting we're going to change is the entity activation range. So I'm going to change this to six and then 16 and then two. Again, you can change these to whatever figures you like. Lower is better, but feel free to do it anywhere in between the default and what I'm choosing here. So the next setting we're going to change is this hopper section here. So we're going to increase the time that hoppers take to do things. So we're going to change this to 24. We're going to change hopper check to 24, and then we're going to change the amount to three. So what we've done here is make hoppers three times slower, basically. So you can change this to whatever you want. If you don't want them to be any slower, just leave them as default. It can break certain things in game to do with hoppers and redstone clocks for example, um, but I'm just going to leave it as that as it does help reduce the lag. So the next setting we're going to change is near the bottom here. So it's called merge radius. So this is kind of like if you've heard of the plugin clear, clear lag where it prevents item drop lag and um, it helps do that without having any additional plugins. So we're going to change item to 3.5 and we're going to change exp to 6. 
So the next setting is the view distance. So just set this to the same figure that you set in the server.properties earlier. So I set mine to five, I believe. So I'll set it to five here as well. So that's all the settings we're going to be changing today. So click save and then restart your server. So once you've given your server a few moments to start up, we're going to install a plugin. So we're going to install this plugin here, which is called Phoenix Anti-Cheat. And in this tutorial, we're just going to be installing it as we do already have a complex tutorial on this already if you want to go through each of the settings manually. So we're just going to install this quickly. So if you click download now and then save it to your downloads folder, and then this plugin also requires another called protocol lib. So I've included a link to this down in the description as well. So click download now here and then download it to your downloads folder once again. Then once you've downloaded both of these jar files, go back to the control panel, then go to the file manager if you're not there already, then go to the plugins folder, click upload file, choose files, and then select each one of these and upload them. Then once you've uploaded them both, click restart and then that plugin should be installed. Again, I do recommend watching this video. There will be a link to it down in the description below where we go through some of the settings available for this plugin if you want to configure it yourself. However, for this tutorial or this series, I'm going to be leaving it as it is by default. So now our server is optimized and protected against hackers. So the next thing we're going to do is format the chat a little bit. So we're going to be using the essentials plugins for this. So if you go inside of the essentials folder within the file manager, then the plugins folder, and then open the config.yml file. And then in here, we're going to do a quick search. So on Windows, if you press Control F and then search for Essentials C, and then if you press Enter a few times, you should go down to this area here. If you're on a Mac, I believe the key shortcut is Command F to open this little search. However, you can just scroll down to it, but it is a little bit quicker to search. So what we're going to do, we're going to scroll down to this area where it says format. So at the moment in game, when someone types in the chat, it will display brackets and then inside of those brackets will be the player's username and prefix for their rank. And then it will display the message. So I want to change it a little bit. So I'm going to remove these brackets. And instead of the brackets, I'm going to put a colon at the end as I think it looks a bit nicer. And then we're also going to be changing the color. So I want the chat to be in a light gray. So if we go to the Minecraft color codes, there'll be a link to this in the description down below. So a light gray is and seven. So if I type here, just before the colon and seven that means the colon and the message that is typed in the chat should be a light gray so now that we've done that i'm also going to change a few other settings so if we scroll down to the bottom to this area here where it is essentials anti-build and then we're going to be changing this alert function here so we're going to make it so that we're not alerted for any block blocks being placed as these are items like lava tnt and so on and because we're running a faction server people are going to be placing these items very often and we're also going to be removing them from the blacklist just to make sure that people can place these items without any problems so now that we've changed that and players will be able to place those items, if you keep scrolling down a little bit, you'll see an area here called Essentials Spawn slash New Players. So we're going to be changing the announcement format. So when a new player joins a server, it will display this message when they join. So it will say, welcome username to the server. And it will be in, a, I believe it's a pink. So we're going to change this a little bit. So I'm just going to delete this entire message and I'm going to put um, welcome and then we're going to put display name, which will be the player's actual username. And then we're going to put um, to server pros faction server and then we're going to change the color codes of this so if we go back to the color codes here again there'll be a link to this in the description below i'm going to use let's use um, a light red so and c for the welcome and then for the username i want it to be a different color so let's use um the aqua color so and b and then after the display name, I want the rest of the message to be in a light red again. So now that will display like so. So now the last setting that we're going to change in this file today is this kit option here. So in the last episode, we edited the kits. However, we didn't change what kit is given to a player when they first join. So I have created a kit called starter and I want everyone who joins a server to be given that kit. So I'm going to put here kit starter. So this is just defining the kit that is given to players when they first join. So now that's all the settings we're going to be changing in this file today. So click save and then restart your server. Then once you've given your server a few moments to start up, you can go ahead and join and take a look at the changes. However, there's not much for us to look at, so I'm not going to be looking at this today in this tutorial, but feel free to have a look yourself. So thank you for watching this episode of our faction series. I hope that you've been able to optimize your server to reduce any lag and that you've changed some valuable settings in essentials. So this is actually the second to last episode of the faction series so make sure you're back next week for the final episode other than that i hope that you have a fantastic day and thank you for watching goodbye and i hope to see you next week